Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and uh, do you like playing video games? Do you like playing online video games? I'm sure most people on this channel do. However, remember a while back when I talked about Valorant and the shady anti-cheats? Especially anti-cheats that run independently of video games at the kernel level? Now, I have to make a pretty big distinction. I've noticed on the internet that people uh, really just, you have to be very verbose and specific. So before any misinformation spreads, I do not think Valorant, Genshin Impact, any game with anti-cheats on the kernel level are inherently bad. Anti-cheats and the video games that they are associated with are two separate entities, okay? Well, Call of Duty is a fine game, okay? It's anti-cheat running at its level is a different story. I think Valorant's a pretty fine competitive game. I have no qualms against it. I played it a few times. However, the actual anti-cheat on it running independently on the system alongside from the game, which I don't actually think it does anymore since Riot actually did patch it so that it's only active the moment your game ever goes online. Totally different story. Now, of course, when it comes to anti-cheats, plenty of multiplayer games need anti-cheats. I'm not against anti-cheats specifically. I understand the need for them, right? There's a there's a necessary requirement for them, especially when games are cross-platform, uh, especially when they run on the PC, Xbox One, PlayStation, Nintendo Switch, iOS, Android, whatever you want to call it. There are some games that are running across seven different platforms, and all those players need some level of reasonable security. And, of course, to keep a level playing field in a competitive game. Now, of course, kernel-level anti-cheats are not new. There are plenty of kernel-level anti-cheats that exist. Uh, kernel-level anti-cheats like Easy Anti-Cheat, for instance, Battle Eye, which are a little bit different because as far as I've been able to tell and analyze, they've only ever ran at the point the game is running. So a bit different compared to things like Vanguard or, you know, other pieces of uh, anti-cheat that are running literally as the system boots up. In Mihoyo's case, they have two games, Honkai Impact 3rd and Genshin Impact. Both of them run with MHY Pro 2, which is their kernel level anti-cheat. In order for me to bypass and play this game on my computer, I have to literally break their terms of service because I run Linux, so I virtualize Windows. Under a virtual machine, this anti-cheat will not run, but because I know how to hide my virtual machine relatively effectively, I can bypass most of these anti-cheats and play these games online. However, when I do that, I'm breaking TOS, so the footage I'm showing you from the game is from the actual iOS version, which I don't need to do any of that special stuff with. However, if I do get banned from Genshin Impact, I could give less of a fuck. This game does not really have PvP components, right? Like, as far as I've been able to tell, it's mostly all about people that are trying to prevent you from hacking their polls, their gotcha system, which is the real moneymaker for the style of deal. Now, what if I told you hackers finally did abuse the actual anti-cheat? You know, I can finally say that I was right all along. When it came to the Valorant video, there was some criticism going, Mike Muna, you're too paranoid. And there's other drivers on your device that are just as vulnerable or have the capability. Yes, I understand that peripheral devices like mice, keyboards, oftentimes come with drivers that could potentially be used for nefarious reasons. But there's a pretty big fucking difference from using a peripheral device that you need to input with your system and understanding there's a degree of an attack surface there versus a game about anime characters. I I'm sure there's a pretty big difference there. I'm not trying to be disingenuous or bad faith. I'm just saying that there's a big difference. That said, though, moving on forward, hackers have in fact abused Genshin Impact's anti-cheat. Yes, kernel-level anti-cheat can now be used to infect you, and it's pretty damn scary. Now, according to our friends over at Trend Micro, during the last week of July 2022, a ransomware infection was triggered in a user environment that had endpoint protection properly miscon or configured, not misconfigured. Analyzing the sequence, we found that the code sign driver called mhypro2.sys, which provides the anti-cheat functions of Genshin Impact as a device driver, was being abused to bypass privileges. As a result, commands from kernel mode killed the endpoint protection processes. So yes, hackers are using this anti-cheat driver to actually kill antiviruses, so then they can launch more nefarious payloads. Organizations and teams should be careful because the ease of obtaining the module, it obviously being that it's part of this anti-cheat delivered with this popular game, played by thousands, hundreds of thousands, if not millions. 
The versatility of the driver in terms of bypassing privileges, ugh, and the existence of well-made proof of concepts. So again, one proof of concept comes from Kagurazaka Sanai, which actually shows you, I hope I really pronounced that right. If you look at this, they have an anti-cheat, and they fired up this proof of concept using the actual driver from Genshin Impact's anti-cheat. This kills the actual antivirus process. And once antiviruses are gone, you can then launch nefarious payloads. Now, I know in the past I've said I don't really use any antiviruses, and that's true. I virtualize Windows. Nothing is really escaping a secured virtual machine unless I'm really stupid and launching some really stupid program, which I don't do. So, of course, for me, having an antivirus really doesn't make any sense to me. I don't really bother with it. But if you don't have my setup at all, and you're just running Windows 10 or just Linux or just Mac on your home, like host OS, and you're running programs, it doesn't kill to have a trusted antivirus. Again, I don't know which one to recommend to you. I don't really use one myself, so I can't promote a product. It's really up to you to do your own research. But, of course, let's get down over here. So, of course, the way that this works and the way that they found it was through a secret stump from an unidentified endpoint of a targeted organization. So, of course, using tools from a, pro a program known as Impacket from SecureAuth, an open source set of tools, scripts really, uh, they found out that uh, basically using this open source tool, which again, it's really designed for security researchers and whatnot. I understand with open source tools, they can be used for nefarious reasons, but there's a lot more good than there is bad out of it. People used these tools and they found out effectively what was going on is these threat actors were launching a few programs one by one. For instance, they had a logon batch file, which basically launched a program known as Help Pain, which kills the antivirus and then other services like those. And then once that's done, because it used the mhypro2.sys file, it kills those antiviruses. Once everything is gone, once all the barriers have been removed, they launch servicehost.exe, which is actually a ransomware payload. And of course, if possible, they would like to spread this payload to other systems on networks and whatnot. According to Trend Micro's analysis over here, they basically uh, loaded it using the nt open file function. And they launched helppain.exe, which basically tried to kill all the antiviruses. It looked through all of these processes and basically reported these to uh, another, it basically reported these using the device IO control function. And once it was done that, it used a control code OX8103-4000 and basically used ZW terminate process to get rid of those antiviruses. Again, once it did that, ransomware all around. Now, there was another user known as Kento Oki who created another proof of concept that showcased that there were some extra capabilities you could do using this scenario. So for instance, you could read write any kernel memory with privilege of kernel from the user mode. Not good. Read write any user memory with privilege from kernel from user mode. Also not good. Get your system up times, enumerate threads in a specific process, allowing reading of the pet thread structure, terminate a specific process by process ID with ZW terminate process, as we saw earlier, which calls in a vulnerable driver context ring zero. Again, all of this is really, really bad. Now, of course, it's not something that uh, is, is really common, and Trend Micro explains it. It is still rare to find a module with code signing as a device driver that can be abused. The point of this case is that a legitimate device driver module with valid code signing has the capability to bypass privileges from user mode to kernel mode. Even if a vendor acknowledges a privilege bypass as a vulnerability and provides a fix, the module cannot be erased once distributed. This file has a code signature for the driver, which allows this module to be loaded in kernel mode. If the signature was signed for a malicious module through private key theft, the certificate can be revoked to invalidate the signature. We've seen this before. However, in this case, it is an abuse of a legitimate module. It seems that there is no compromise of the private key. So it is still not known if the certificate can be revoked. It remains valid, at least for now, and as far as I've been able to tell, it's still valid. As mentioned above, this module is very easy to obtain and will be available to everyone until it is erased from existence. Good luck with that on the internet. It could remain for a long time as a useful utility for bypassing privileges. Certificate revocation and antivirus detection might help to discourage the abuse, but there are no solutions at this time because it is a legitimate module. So again, ladies and gentlemen, what's scary is once you give all of these programs or all these games anti or all these anti cheats, rather uh, all this uh, extra leeway on your system, bad actors, you don't have to be scared about anybody spying on you from the government. Trust me, they're in the ISP level. 
But bad people who want to hurt you for financial reasons can absolutely take advantage of these systems. Now, I think it's really up to people who develop anti-cheat software like this. It's The onus is really on them. When you're developing stuff like this, obviously you're going to have cracks in the system. But you, are, you should be put up to more scrutiny than any other developer, especially when you're installing these rootkits on average people's systems. Again, I want to specify by saying this. A Genshin Impact as a game, just by playing it alone, is no reason that your personal information is unsafe. I've seen that being thrown around on the internet too. By playing Genshin Impact, suddenly millions of users are unsafe. No, Genshin Impact as a game is different from the anti-cheat that's being peddled. If somebody sends you this anti-cheat, all right, alongside any form of the executable file, you do not launch it, period. Again, common sense is key in this scenario. This kind of a anti, this, this driver that's being passed around like a venereal disease is unfortunately very capable of doing some really nefarious things on your system. So again, it's up to you to check your event logs, all of that stuff, just to make sure that when you're running this driver underneath Windows, it is literally associating itself only with Genshin Impact or Honkai Impact 3rd like it is supposed to. If this driver is being called by anything other than that, well, you're, you're being completely destroyed. You're being completely hacked at that point, and you need to be careful and scrub your systems, disconnect it, and make sure that your system is safe. Because really, with something, with this, with, with some device driver that has this level of a hook in your system, it, you really have to be careful and make sure you're watching if it's actually being called for the right reasons. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you don't even have to have Genshin Impact installed to even be vulnerable to this. As long as somebody gives you that device driver, which is very, very small in size, bad things can happen onto your system. But again, I'm not making this to necessarily scare you. Yeah, kind of for me, it's like I was right all along. There are risks associated with these anti-cheats. You do have to be careful. But of course, at the end of the day, education is the best thing anybody can do. So when you are running any games on your system, when you are running any tools like this, you need to be careful what's actually running behind on your system. Because right now, you could be hacked. You could not be hacked. But it's better to know that this is a risky device driver that can exist on your system. And if it's being called for, you know, anything other than playing those two games, you need to make sure you audit your system. That said, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. I am out.